Hi folks, Danny here at Parte. Isn't it funny how many mysteries there are in this world? It's kind of like tofu. Tofu has always confused me. <laughs> just never quite got the concept. But that's just me. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just, that's just my perception, right? So similarly, I was looking on YouTube this morning and saw that there are no less and six, six video uploads from Ken Bird concerning Crow, Crow and me, and anybody else. Why is that? Because the last that I understood is that there were such big things happening on that side of the fence, huge things that we were no longer a concern for him. All we were looking to do was use him as a springboard. So who's being used as a springboard now? Which that's the way it's always been. So if I think about this, I have to just conclude that there is no big, big contract coming. Because if there was, it would have already have happened. Okay, so either Either there is nothing, or they've lost complete confidence in the product. He's just trying in any way, any way possible to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Now, isn't that the definition of insanity? When you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different conclusion, right? A different result. And in the end, it's not working. So... You would think anybody with any monocle of sense would change up their strategy. But not Ken. Ken's a one, one broke record. That's it. That is it. As a matter of fact, as a part of the Ken the Carney video that I will be putting out, one of the, the primary like segments that's within that video is all dedicated to looking at what's going on now and looking at videos three years ago, and five years ago and seeing it's the same thing. Once again, only two things have changed. The lumen count has gotten much bigger and Ken's language has gotten more guttural and aggressive. Those are the only two changes between back then and now. The screens even look the same. <laughs> the screens even look exactly the same. No matter how many versions we're on now. As a matter of fact, I've got one that I'll show you here. This is from just a little over a year ago, the Supreme 8. And then now you have this this Phantom crap, right? Notice a big difference? Same song sheet he's singing off of in the background, and it all looks the same. I think... See, obsession is always the precursor, right, to stalking and harassment. And I think that's why harassment is a very viable term here because bottom bottom line is he don't have to sell you anything. You can make your point, say you're scared, you know, you're scared, you won't sell to me, and let it go. But no, it's not good enough for him. He's looking for something else that I don't even think he knows what he's looking for because he's not going to get there. And in the process, he's done some really bad explanation around patents. Let me just clarify this for you. A provisional patent is the same as seeking patent pending. Okay? You don't roll into a provisional patent, dummy. It goes provisional patent, and then if you want to go before the review board to get a formal patent, you have to file for a non-provisional patent. It's the way it works. Not the way you explain it. With all the remotes <laughs> going back and forth. Okay, it doesn't work that way. If a company wants to use that patent, they license it. That's why it happens with a lot of aftermarket parts for cars. You guys who have ever bought aftermarket parts, you know. They're kind of like a cheaper version of the original part usually made out of cheaper components and the quality assurance isn't always as good right but those are they license the patents from the original patent holder and then sell aftermarket parts that's the way that works it's not reverse engineering okay it's 
<laughs> not the way it goes. If you reverse engineer something and you even put it out there and it's close to the original patent, you're going to be screwed. So, don't know what even the point that you were trying to make with that whole description was, but it just never quite got there. But that's just like your screens. You have to fake them because they'll never quite get there. It's like faking the big O. <laughs> All right, but here's what I'm, I'm going to let you in on a little secret as to what we're doing. So I'm going to have this playing in the background, and what you're going to see is a new addition to our lineup. So that'll give us six screens total, and it, that's where we're going to stay for quite some time. But we'll have six screens total. And this new addition, I'm showing you just what it can hold up to. Now, I want you to pay attention when I show you the uh, light meter, because that light meter is in times 10. So just to summarize for you, so you don't have to try to figure it out, Ken, that is over 3,000 lux. 3,000 lux, not hundreds, 3,000 lux on the screen. And you can see I'm moving around so people can see I didn't capture some sort of peak reading. It's changing as I move it. Going anywhere from about 2,800 to 2,900 to 3,200. All right? 3,200 lumens, or lux, excuse me. Anywhere from 2,800 lux to 3,200 lux is what that screen was showing. It's what's hitting the surface of the screen, not a table, not the floor, but the screen surface. And you're still able to pull up that image using a 3,000 lumen projector from about 13 and a half feet away. 3,000 lumen projector in eco. And just for any of those, because I had this, this guy named uh, Jacob Adams, I believe what's his name, had reached out. Crowe referred to you and I as butt buddies. Which I find kind of offensive, not for me and you, Crow, but because my uh, fourth pe favorite person in the world is my brother-in-law, David, and David's a gay man. It's kind of a nasty thing to put out there, don't you think? Mr. Jacob Adams, with your half-lit room and screen that was definitely not Ken's. Yeah. So, but this, this is the kind of vile methodologies that Ken and his little cohorts, his little toadies, use. And like I've said, I mean, this is one guy. Okay, it's one guy. And the only reason I mention is because after that statement, you need to be called out. But ultimately, guys, what this is getting to is that you have a guy out here who has always screwed people by rigging his demonstrations trying to suck in the neophiles because he figures with every crop there's going to be people who finally catch on to him and they're just going to move on or they're going to try to beat up on him but he plays into that he needs this soap opera more than anyone else out here i promise you because without the soap opera all the information that's been put out there that people see with his name attached to it he'd be screwed he's not going to sell anything and he shouldn't be. And hopefully soon he won't be. But I'm just going to show you how unscared I am and why it is best for you that you never took that challenge, that independent review or comparison. Because, Ken, if these screens will stand up with that small of a projector, okay, I'm not having to use 5,000 lumens, 5,200 lumens. If I can get that kind of demonstration on 3,000 lux on the screen surface. Imagine how it'll hold up in, say, four to 600 lux in a house. You're going to see. You're going to get the chance to see. And also, I'm going to show you outside. You'll get to see outside what it is, and I'll actually show my lux. Unlike you who start these videos, I'm going to show you this. So you start this video from, I don't know, Within 20 minutes or so in the video, it's already gotten dark. So as I told you, these videos are always at twilight. 
So you'll see, here's a clip from like two minutes in, a few more minutes in, and then basically once it gets dark. And I'm showing you the time scale. Because he's thinking he's impressing people. You wonder why it's always cloudy in Philadelphia. It's not always cloudy in Philadelphia. I've, I've flew through Philly so many times, it's pathetic. It always looks like that because his camera's rigged. Just that simple. That's the reason it always look like it looks like a big whiteout in the sky. You see that in my camera now? No. But it always looks like that in his camera. But Ken, I'm not going to obsess over you. And I would just say, for the sake of your own self, because you look like a jackass, why don't you just give it up? Because it ain't working. It's not working. I mean, prove to me, show me some proof in a video, do some upload where it shows that it's working for you, that it's truly working. Show some real evidence because all we ever hear in your backups is you being a blowhard, talking a bunch of smack. That's all it is. It's all smack talk with not a damn thing to back it up. And you can throw... 40 of those refunded order things in, in the floor, it doesn't matter. All you're showing is that you're the one who's obsessed. That's what people are going to take away from this. Like, don't you get it? He's not going to sell to you. Just go to hell on. But once again, like a 3 IQ broken record. All right, you guys take care. We got uh, some presentations. I did get two screens uh, coded yesterday. And I'll get my third one coded this week, and we're going to be showing you Series A, Vega, and we're also going to be showing you a new product. It's this one here, which you see in that display. It's called Polaris, and yes, it's a little panel, Mr. Bird. See that? But for those of you guys out there who wonder, I use little panels for a number of reasons. But for every little panel that's the final coating, and probably make out just right down there there's a little bit of a script along the this top edge up here okay that scripting and that panel shape you'll notice they're all cut a little bit differently stands as posterity for me it goes into an archive I keep all of these put up because that way five to seven years from now if somebody comes down the road and says well, that's not the same product uh, I've got everything coded in here, the data dates, the name, creation dates, as well as the, the actual panel itself, okay, and its shape, which can be easily correlated to the panel in the video that I displayed. So damn right I use my little panels. But where you were wrong, and I'll show you here, is that in that video that you love to rip into, so erroneously you were wrong that panel was never hidden inside the fireplace you can see from the side angles that it was actually out in front of the fireplace not covered by anything and actually leaning backwards a little bit so that the light from the ceiling could hit it all the more easily and there's me punching my little tabs up my sliders so that the light was all the way up. It was all there, it's always been there, just like the video where you say I used Vaseline. There was never any Vaseline. Just more lies from a known liar who's actually having to return a good bit of purchase money because of your lies. I find that hilarious. You guys take care, bye.